Hey everyone and welcome back to another Terrarium demonstration. In this video we will go in depth on the specifics behind Terrarium False Bottoms. This will include the importance of incorporating a false bottom as well as how to make several different types. As you well know I incorporate a false bottom in nearly every Terrarium build and there are several reasons why. A false bottom, otherwise known as a drainage layer or riparian layer, receives its name because of the main function it performs. When used in any kind of terrarium, a false bottom collects water that passes down through the substrate layer. However, what happens next depends on the type of terrarium. In open terrariums, cactus terrariums, or succulent terrariums, a false bottom keeps water separate from the substrate layer. This feature is important across the board, but especially in cactus and succulent terrariums. Both types of plants require a dry out period in between watering. Normally this isn't an issue when growing the plants conventionally, but terrariums are a little unconventional. That said, containers used for terrariums typically don't have a drainage hole. If water to remain in the substrate for an extended amount of time because of the absence of a drainage hole, then the plants would quickly die. Thanks to our false bottom, the plants can have the necessary dry out period and we can grow the plants a little unconventionally. Also, since the terrariums are open, the water in the false bottom will eventually evaporate and exit the container completely. The amount of light and temperature will dictate how quickly this occurs. Regardless, it's important to allow enough time in between watering so that the false bottom doesn't completely fill up with water. Otherwise, there is no point to have one in the first place. A false bottom also collects water in a closed terrarium, but it does something additional. After your terrarium is watered, the water will build up in the false bottom. However, this water won't remain here forever. In time, it will evaporate just like in the terrariums mentioned previously. However, since the container is closed, the water can't escape this environment. Instead, the water condensates on the container in the form of little water droplets. Eventually, these droplets will precipitate or fall back down into the substrate layer. Afterward, the water will make its way down into the false bottom once more, and the cycle repeats. In other words, the environment of a closed terrarium creates its own water cycle. This water cycle will continuously water your terrarium, and since the container is completely sealed, additional water never needs to be added. Even if you occasionally open your terrarium for maintenance, it's unlikely that you will have to add more water, but keep an eye out just in case. As explained earlier, the false bottom also keeps standing water separate from the substrate. This is important for long-term success. If substrate is continuously saturated with water, it will quickly become putrid. Simply put, putrid substrate will create an unhealthy environment that will kill the terrarium in no time. That said, how your terrarium smells is a good indication of its health. If your terrarium smells rotten, then it's likely going to be rotten. A healthy terrarium should smell something like a forest, which in my opinion is a pleasant smell. To summarize, a false bottom keeps water separate from the substrate layer in any terrarium. In an open terrarium, this separation will keep the substrate from becoming saturated with water and allow for a dry out period when necessary. This dry out period is essential for the care of certain plants that are kept in an open environment such as succulents or cacti. However, in a closed terrarium, the separation will create an optimal water cycle and keep the substrate from becoming putrid. In any case, this separation is a key component that ensures the long term success of your terrarium. Now that the significance of a false bottom has been explained, let's discuss various ways that you can make one. There are a lot of methods and materials available for this process. I never want you to think that there is only one way to do anything, so I'll give you a few options that have worked well for me. I will discuss the pros and cons of each, which should give you enough information to choose a false bottom best suited to your project or limitations. Let's start off with the tried and true, which is my personal favorite, the mesh barrier false bottom. Essentially this type of false bottom is composed of two elements including a drainage element and a mesh barrier. To make one simply place anywhere from one half to one and a half inches of your preferred drainage element into the bottom of your container. The depth of this layer is dependent largely on the size of the container itself, but can also be dictated on the type of plants you wish to house. For example, a cactus or succulent terrarium should be much deeper. It could be anywhere from one and a half to three inches deep or more. Here are various sizes and shapes of containers, each with a suitable amount of the drainage element. If you put in a little less or a little more than you need, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. This part is relatively flexible. 
There are various materials that you could use as a drainage element, including but not limited to gravel, large pebbles, leka, or even an unconventional item such as marbles. After choosing your drainage element and adding a suitable amount to your container, you need to add a mesh barrier. There are several materials that can be used for this part as well. However, I suggest only using synthetic materials to promote the longevity of your terrarium. If we were to use a material that would decompose, such as a coffee filter or newspaper, then eventually this false bottom will become useless. What would occur is that the substrate layer would slowly mix into the drainage element as the barrier breaks apart. If I had to guess, you probably want your terrarium to last as long as possible. That said, suitable materials include carbon fiberglass window screen. The finer the mesh, the better. However, do not use metal screen. It will either rust or corrode, which will create an unhealthy environment within your terrarium. You could also use weed blocker or garden fabric. Either will work fine, but they do not allow water to pass through optimally. It tends to sit around for a little bit before passing into the drainage element. This can create issues with plants that don't like to have wet roots. So if this is what you have or what you want to use, choose your plants accordingly. Filter floss or polyester fluff can also be used. It's somewhat bulky and in my opinion it doesn't look that good, but it gets the job done. Finally, you could use something like plastic poked with holes. This is a good solution for those of you on a budget. Simply get a plastic bag or something of the sort and poke it full of holes. It'll function similarly to weed block or garden fabric if done properly. When cutting your barrier to size, always cut it slightly larger than the overall size of your container. Doing so will prevent substrate from sneaking down into the false bottom both initially and long term. Although some substrate may sneak down, we should do what we can to keep it as clean as possible. However, if you get a little runoff, no need to redo your false bottom. It shouldn't make that big of a deal. Considering this, when placing your mesh into the terrarium, do so by allowing the excess to curl upward like so. Then when you add the substrate, press it up against the excess first and then add the rest. I find that this is the most effective way to take advantage of how the mesh was cut. The reason why I prefer the mesh barrier false bottom is because it's easy to make, will last indefinitely, and has open spaces within the drainage element. These open spaces are important because they will aid in perpetuating the water cycle. Although the water cycle would happen regardless, it happens more frequently and more effectively because of the open spaces in this type of false bottom. This type of false bottom is well suited for any kind of terrarium because of how well it drains. However, it is hard to place the mesh barrier in smaller terrariums. A similar one is the sphagnum moss barrier false bottom. This one incorporates the same technique seen before using a drainage element, but it substitutes the mesh barrier with sphagnum moss. To make one, simply place your drainage element as before, and then put a thin layer of damp sphagnum moss on top. Enough to conceal the drainage element will work fine. Like before, the moss will act as a barrier that keeps the substrate separate from the drainage element. This type of false bottom is cheap and easy to make, creates an optimal water cycle, and is completely natural. However, since the sphagnum moss will break down eventually, substrate will at some point in time make its way down into the false bottom. Plant's roots can also displace the moss, which could possibly cause substrate to sneak down prematurely. So although this one is functional, it doesn't last indefinitely. Additionally, I would not recommend using this type of false bottom for cactus or succulent plants because the sphagnum moss will retain semi-moist at all times. This inevitably wicks some amount of moisture up into the substrate. Regardless, this is one of the easier false bottoms to make and it could work on a container of any size. Next up is the sand or sand and rock false bottom. This type of false bottom is also very cheap and easy to make, lasts indefinitely, and gets the job done. To make one, simply place roughly one half to one and a half inches of sand or a mixture of sand and gravel into your container. Since the particles of sand are so small, they will keep the substrate above the waterline quite effectively. However, this is also the reason why I don't frequently use this type of false bottom. Since there's really no open spaces in between the sand, there isn't much room for water. The issue here is that the sand will always remain somewhat moist. The moisture will then wick back up into the substrate to some degree. 
From my experience, this type of false bottom also seems to create a subpar water cycle comparatively. The reason being that the spaces in between the granules of sand aren't as large as the spaces in between the gravel for example. Regardless, this type of false bottom can and does work pretty effectively. It can easily be used on a terrarium of any size, but I prefer to use it exclusively on smaller terrariums. Now we'll go over the drop floor false bottom. This one is a little different, incorporates elements from some of the previous methods, and uses some of its own. For this type we need the following materials. A container, or something to make a container, a concealer, and a barrier. For the container you can do several things. You can use something like this deli cup and drill it full of holes, or you could make a container using something like this knitting mesh and put it together with zip ties. I use a similar technique in a lot of my vivariums using egg crate. With your imagination, I'm sure you could come up with a lot of alternatives as well. When choosing or making a container, keep in mind that this element will dictate the depth of your false bottom. Also choose a container that is slightly smaller than the overall size of your terrarium. For example, see how these containers have space around them? Well that's exactly what we're looking for. Now that we have our container in place, let's add the concealer. Typically I use gravel for this part because I like how it looks, but something like Lika or even sand would work as well. Simply place some of this element around your container until the required depth is achieved. Now place a barrier over top of the entire structure. You can use any of the components described earlier. This type of false bottom functions just as well as the others, but I typically only use it for larger terrariums or vivariums. For the amount of work that goes into something like this compared to the others, it's really not worth it unless you are trying to make your terrarium as light as possible. Further, this type of false bottom has more room for water than any other method. This is one of the reasons why I like to use it in my vivariums. Finally is the charcoal false bottom. This one is simple to make and you really only need two components give or take. You're going to need the following, charcoal or activated carbon, and a barrier. Start by adding a layer of charcoal that is roughly one half to one and a half inches deep just like the previous methods. Then top it off with your barrier as seen earlier. And voila, it's as simple as that. If you want to use this method in smaller terrariums, you can pulverize the charcoal into small pieces, almost like sand or fine gravel. In doing so, you no longer need a barrier and it also doubles as your charcoal layer. I typically don't use this method in larger terrariums because charcoal and carbon are a little on the expensive side compared to the other materials I use. Plus, I always recommend adding a charcoal layer anyways. And this leads into the final topic. Although the charcoal layer isn't directly part of the false bottom, it ties largely into the functions it performs in a closed terrarium. If you recall the false bottom in a closed terrarium acts as a reservoir that keeps clean water on tap which endlessly waters your terrarium. Well this is only possible when a charcoal layer is used. Here's why. The charcoal acts as a purification element that cleans the water just before it passes down into the false bottom. Therefore, after the water evaporates from the reservoir, it is previously passed through the charcoal. The cycle repeats on and on. Basically all that happens is the charcoal removes impurities from the water during this process. Further, charcoal also provides additional benefits to your terrarium. It inhibits mold growth, promotes cleaner air quality, provides additional surface area for microfauna such as springtails, and it also provides some nutrients. So all in all it will make your terrarium that much better. I also like to mix charcoal into my substrate layer in addition to having the charcoal layer to begin with, but that's a topic for a different time. As stated earlier, you can use horticultural charcoal, cleaned bonfire coals, or lumpwood charcoal that's sold in the barbecue section of the hardware store. However, do not use charcoal briquettes. They contain chemicals that will create an unhealthy environment in your terrarium. You could also use activated carbon which is readily available at any pet store. And that about does it. This demonstration by no means shows every type of false bottom. I simply chose some of the ones that I personally use and find to be very effective. As you can see, most of these false bottoms use similar methods and materials. They can also be combined to make something totally unique yet functional.
Regardless, if you put time into properly making this portion of your terrarium, it will prove invaluable to the longevity of it. As always, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and learned something useful that can be added to your personal toolbox.